Welcome back to the channel everyone. It is great to have you back. My name is David and for the past couple of years I've been trying to design the perfect backyard beehive and today I'm very excited to show you the White House Hive. Now all of my interest around beekeeping and hive design um, and making these hives really began a couple of years ago in 2019 when I met a beekeeper who had designed and built his own horizontal hive and that really got me thinking about different styles of beehives, you know, uh, some non langstroth hive designs really is what they are, um, and really got me curious about the world of bees and just got the ball rolling. So um, in 2019 and 2020, um, I built these two hives and uh, they are working great so far. Uh, I've had them now for two years and I'm very pleased with their design. Um, but obviously there are a couple things that I think could have been approved, uh, improved upon. So for one, they can only hold 20 uh, double deep frames and that's a little bit on the snug side. Um, I did have one of these hives swarm this year so I'd love to try and prevent that. And then these hives are not insulated and of course being up here in Massachusetts, uh, I really wanted to insulate these hives and as such, I, I wrapped these hives in the winter so that the bees could stay toasty um, over the winter and have a better chance of survival. Um, so those were the two main things that I wanted to fix, but there are a bunch of other little factors that are all new about this White House hive, so let me go through them with you. If you watched the video that I put out, it would be a while ago now, um, about the design of this hive, you, you'll know that I had a few design criteria when I was actually thinking about making this hive. Um, the first of which was that it had to be good for the bees. Um, and that seems pretty obvious, but um, I really wanted this beehive to be good for the bees themselves, not just us, the beekeepers. Um, so uh, this hive is obviously a horizontal hive. Um, and I really like the horizontal design because it allows for easy access to the hive um, without interfering with the bees too much. Um, so I can just pop open that lid and now I have access to all of these frames. Uh, the bees are mostly contained in these, uh, these center frames here with divider boards on either side. Um, the inner material is all plywood and construction grade lumber. Um, it's entirely untreated. I didn't want there to be any finishes or anything like that. I wanted it to be all natural. Um, so that is really good for the bees. I don't have to worry about you know, them getting poisoned with any of the materials in the hive. That would be totally counterproductive. So. Um, I didn't do it that way. Um, a second thing, this hive actually holds 25 frames as opposed to 20. And that will hold, you know, a colony even at the peak of their strength. But it also could allow me to put a divider right down the middle and then kind of split the hive into two and have potentially two colonies existing in the same shell, um, but still, you know, coexisting and, and sharing warmth. Um, but having a place to stay entirely separate from one another. So that would be pretty neat. Now obviously from taking a look at this hive, you can tell that it's pretty deep. It's not your regular just long Langstroth hive. And I actually have uh, what I call double deep frames installed in this hive. And I have one here on the end that's currently unused. And what it is, is the equivalent of two Langstroth deep frames connected by a sliding dovetail joint. So these can be split apart um, and then you have two separate frames. And the reason why I think these are so great is because they allow the bees to build almost a continuous sheet of comb um, from the top to the bottom. And this is about 16 to 17 inches of comb depth. Um, but then if you're using this for honey uh, extraction, you can split these apart. And now each of these will fit in a standard honey extractor here in the US because you're never gonna find an extractor that's gonna fit this extra deep uh, frame. Um, so I, I had to make them break apart somehow. So I think this is a really elegant solution. Um, these are also a version 2.0 of the ones in my previous hives. Um, and I have a whole video just about these frames. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Um, but yeah, I've got 25 of these. I did also make just some extra deep frames, which are just solid. Um, I'll, I intend to use these for the brood chamber. Um, and the bees that you see flying around are actually a small swarm 
that I rescued from a neighbor's wall a couple of months ago. So they're still pretty small, which is why I have them contained to these seven frames in the middle. Um, but hopefully they'll grow over time and, and fingers crossed that they survive the winter. And the final and arguably most important improvement on this hive versus my old hives is that these walls are permanently insulated. So each of these walls is actually holding two inches of foam insulation. Um, this top is holding four inches and then the bottom which is screwed on from below is an inch of insulation. So that is all built into the hive. I don't have to apply any insulation when it when the fall comes around um, and that's just one more step that I don't have to do and I really really enjoy that convenience so uh, this hive is a bit chunkier because that insulation is built in but I think it just looks a lot cleaner a lot nicer and it saves me a step in the winter time and here's a look at the one long continuous entrance slot I've cut um, I actually have installed these sections of rope um, I don't know if you can see in there but I've narrowed the entrance down to about three or four inches currently um, but having this long slot allows me to to move the entrance wherever I want and once again if I had two colonies in here you know I could have an entrance on either side well away from each other um, so that the bees don't get that confused so that's a pretty neat little thing and it's just fun to watch the bees come and go essentially through the doorway of the White House, which <laughs> just cracks me up. It's so fun. And the second criteria that I set out for myself was that this hive had to be easy to use. And I just showed you how easy it is to lift open the top. Um, the top is the heaviest part of this hive, and it probably weighs about 20 pounds to move it upward. So, I mean, it's not a, it's not a light top, and before I put the hinges on it, you know, it's, it would be quite unmanageable to pick the whole thing up, but just to hinge it open, it's, it's quite doable and certainly less heavy than, uh, you know, a, a super full of honey. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Similarly, I made the bottom really easy to be removed. Um, just a couple of screws from the bottom and that thing will pop right off. And that lends itself to be cleaned really easily if I ever have to get in there and, and clean out the hive. That'll be simple to do. And then having the insulation built in just means I don't have to do that in the winter and I can put all of my energy towards taking care of the bees and not really having to maintain the hive itself, um, which is not something I want to be doing. I want to be beekeeping, not hive tending, if that makes sense. So I'm really happy with the way this hive, uh, you know, allows me to interact with the bees. It's really seamless and uh, I hope that in the coming years that'll, that'll be proven so you know I've only had bees in here for a, a month maybe um, so a lot of what I'm saying is initial thoughts and kind of after a month of beekeeping how I've been interacting with it but certainly all this should be taken with a grain of salt I will uh, I'll do some updates in the years to come and the last criteria I set out for myself a couple months ago was that I wanted this hive to be easy to build and if you don't want to make your hive look like the White House, this is really easy to build. I spent way too long putting on all the individual trim pieces and all, all the stuff like that, which was a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. Um, but the hive itself is just a box, um, an insulated box. So that was really simple and I was really happy with the way that came out. Um, the other thing that I really made an effort to do was all of the pieces on this hive are held together with screws. Um, I didn't use any glue in the construction of this hive. And that's because I want this hive to be modular and replaceable. So any piece that uh, breaks down or needs to be replaced in this hive, I want to be able to fix just that piece and not the entire hive. So uh, at the forefront of my mind, I'm thinking, you know, what happens if uh, a colony gets infected um, and I have to, you know, potentially burn down the hive or, or like, you know, entirely replace the interior? Well. I can do that because the interior plywood is just held on with screws. So in the, in the worst case scenario of, you know, my colony dying and, and for some unknown reason um, or a known reason, and I, and I want to replace the whole interior lining, you know, I can do that for fairly cheap because it's all just held on with screws. So that's true for every part on this hive. You know, if the legs start to rot, I can replace those. Um, if the frames start to go, obviously I have more of those. And so this hive is really future proof or, or at least as future proof as I could make it today. And so I think that's a, the last piece of criteria that I think I managed to hit. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of this White House hive. I know I had a lot of fun building it and I'm super excited to have bees in it finally. Um, keeping my fingers crossed that these guys can survive the winter and I'll try and provide some regular updates on how they're doing and, and such like that. Um, I do have plans available for this hive. They don't cover how to make your hive look like the White House, but um, they do have all the plans for the Hive 2.0 that I'm calling it um, with the full insulated walls and everything like that, um, including the frame design, I will add. Um, so if you're interested, go check that out. I'll put a link in the description. Um, but if not, oh wait, hold on. Something's going on. What oh, cow? Oh. Madam Speaker Belosi, Madam Vice President Kamala Hivis, and distinguished members of our bicameral, bipartisan system. On behalf of the Bean Administration, I tell you, the state of the hive is strong. Much in part, thanks to the hardworking drones and worker bees of the second year of the Strout Backyard Apiary. It is no secret that over the past two years, we have had our differences. Sometimes, those differences have stung. But we have fought fiercely for our belief in a more efficient, more elegant design of a beehive and I am grateful and proud of what we have accomplished together. Over the past year, we have seen many successes and challenges. The nectar flow for our first year's honey harvest was a historic low, and we saw many workers struggle to put honey on the table. But at the end of the season, our first and remarkable season, we came together and harvested the fruits of our labor. Nine pounds of honey, nine pounds! something indeed to be proud of. Tonight we also salute our troops, the brave guard bees that defend and protect our hive. These guard bees were vigilant throughout the season, fending off hostile moths, ants, and other bad actors that sought to destroy what we had so carefully built together. In the next few seasons, we hope to make ourselves even more independent ramping up our domestic honey extraction and reducing our dependence on foreign pollen. But we can't do this unless we work together, all the bees of this hive. This hive is strong because of its diversity. This hive was built by immigrants, Italian bees, who were imported here and have greatly improved our hive as well as many others. I know there are a lot of strong opinions out there about using non-native species for honey production, but I want to remind all of us what these immigrant bees have helped us achieve. As your president, I want to be a leader for all bees, not just the rescued swarm or the ones who have been with me since last season. This administration is about the queen bee, the drone bee, but above all else, the regular working class bees, the women who truly make these colonies what they are. From tending to our young, defending the hive, and harvesting our resources, we are perpetually astonished and grateful to these nurses, officers, and engineers. It is my hope that everyone on both sides of the Queen Excluder can get on board with our plans for this year, because we are going to need all hands on deck. At this critical stage of hive development, early in the season, be part of an agreement is the most important thing we can cultivate. Our three branches of government, the beekeepers, the judiciary apiary, and this, the bicameral system of Congress, are working together in harmony to make these horizontal hives healthy, successful, and sustainable. The credit of this success goes to everyone who's carried pollen, everyone who's nursed the young, who's defended our borders, who's tended to the health of the hive, and prevented swarming by removing threats to the hive, the sick, the elderly, and of course, the men. And as we look forward to the coming season, I'm filled with hope that the ingenuity and perseverance of our colony will bring us another successful harvest. 
I have more confidence than ever that the state of these hives are strong. So thank you, may God bless you, and may God bless the united hives of this backyard. Thank you. Give me a boost.